So at some point after robots take all of our jobs, they'll eventually decide that the world just really doesn't need humans that badly, and we'll do away with us all together. But then, haven't you ever wondered how this incredibly rosy vision of the future will come to pass? Well, I can tell you that it'll probably involve neural networks. Now, we tend to think of artificial intelligence as the capability of a computer to make sensible decisions on its own, kind of like a human. And as it turns out, it's more human-like than you actually might think. Computer scientists and programmers have modeled the way that computers arrive at their decisions after our own brains, at least to a point. So inside your nervous system, your neurons are arranged in such a way that after information is taken in, one group of neurons will pass that information to the next group in a way that depends on what signals the previous group was sending. Okay, so for example then, if neurons in your muscles sense that they're working really hard because you're going out for a run, those neurons send out signals through a specific pathway that ultimately results in your brain telling your diaphragm to breathe harder rather than, you know, send a message to your hair to grow faster. And although the way that our neurons work is immensely more complicated than an artificial neural network made up of ones and zeros, the neural networks used in machine learning are at least loosely based on the workings of your brain. Instead of neurons made up of DNA and cytoplasm though, a software neural network uses processing nodes stacked into many different layers. So a node in the first layer, which initially receives the data, weights all of its incoming connections by multiplying each piece of data by a certain factor depending on the connection. It then adds these numbers together, and if it's above a certain threshold, the node sends it along to a node in the next layer, and then so on and so forth. Once the data gets to the end of the neural network, the network has effectively made a decision based on weighting this combined and then recombined data across many of these layers. Now, all of this probably sounds quite abstract, but basically, neural networks use thousands or millions of these nodes to turn those numbers into something useful. Of course, even the most sophisticated neural network isn't going to know right off the bat how to differentiate a picture of a burrito from a body pillow, just like a baby doesn't pop out of the womb already knowing how to speak the king's English. So instead, developers train a neural network by feeding it lots and lots of both relevant and irrelevant inputs. So for something like a self-driving car, it might be a ton of images, including some of pickup trucks. As the data gets fed into the network, developers monitor its behavior and then adjust the weights on the processing nodes until the desired output is reached and the system can eventually quickly differentiate a truck from a bicycle or baby stroller or stationary object or what have you. The whole idea is very general purpose, so it can actually be adapted to lots of different situations. Other than the more well-known examples that we've already discussed, like image recognition and autonomous vehicles, neural networks have been used for everything from filtering spam out of email to training computers to play video games nearly as well as professional level human players. Of course, training a computer to think is more complicated than getting it to run a bunch of predefined instructions. And as such, training a neural network can be quite time consuming and depending on the application, requires some pretty powerful hardware. In fact, the computers in current self-driving cars are not only more powerful than your standard desktop PC, they are notorious battery hogs. But as processors become more efficient and our training methods become less tedious, we fully expect that one day our cars and spam filters might be even smarter than we are. So even if they do decide to turn on us, take over the world and rule in tyranny, at least we won't have to deal with scam emails from Nigerian princes or terrible drivers anymore. 
Private internet access supports a variety of VPN protocols and types of encryption and authentication to allow you to dial in the exact level of privacy protection that you need. They've got apps for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Linux, and Google Chrome with support for other platforms coming. You can connect up to five devices at the same time with a single account, and their apps include features like DNS leak protection, IPv6 leak protection, and an internet kill switch that will block all traffic if the VPN becomes disconnected unexpectedly. So check it out today at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys, like, dislike, check out our other videos, leave a comment if you have a suggestion for a future fast as possible episode, and don't forget to subscribe to Tech Quickie and ring the bell. You look really closely, make sure it's rung. Ringed? Wrong? Right.